Good morning. We welcome our Facebook congregation as they start rolling in. Uh, again, as uh, we gather together in person, uh, I'm, I'm thankful that we have this opportunity. Again, as I've expressed before, there are some states that are still under a mandate not to gather. Uh, and uh, again, as we have been doing it, we've been doing it uh, with uh, safekeeping in involved, uh, trying to be very healthy by wearing masks and also keeping safe distance. Uh, so again, as uh, God gathers us together this day, uh, we gather together for his gifts. Uh, obviously, the gift of his people as we gather in person, or those of you that are at home, I hope you're gathering together. Please feel free to do that, to worship together with other people that you're comfortable with. Uh, I heard the, the term quarantine, quarantine, where you start uh, developing relationships with a small group of people and then gathering with them. So I hope you all can uh, find those opportunities to quarantine with others for worship. I do want to explain a, a couple of the hymns today to just make sure uh, that we, we uh, understand what's going on. Uh, the first hymn that we have on page two is a hymn we have not done here at All Saints. Uh, the way we're going to do it is this. Luann's going to play the whole hymn through the first, with, with one verse, so you'll be able to hear the tune. First verse, I'm going to sing. If any of you, if you're like me, singing along helps. So if any of you want to sing along with me on verse one, feel free to do so. Because that, for some of you, it might help you pick up the tune. Then we're going to ask the congregation, all the congregation, to join in on verses two and four as they're printed in the bulletin. So again, if you want to join with me on verse one, you're more than welcome to. But it'll be Luann me and then the congregation for the last two please note on page four and five uh, again we're doing a first one a difficult one to start but we're doing a familiar one second uh, amazing grace my chains are gone please notice we sing two verses the refrain the last verse and then we do the refrain two times at the very end and the last hymn you should be able to figure that one out we've done that one before uh, so, so as we gather together as God's people, uh, God has drawn us together in this place today. Uh, it is, is by his moving of the Holy Spirit in us to come together, whether it be in person or whether it be uh, virtually. Uh, and we thank God for the gifts that we receive this day. And so in preparation for our worship this day, we take some, some time for meditative thought. You can use it for prayer. You can meditate on the, one of the scripture passages, you'll notice the psalm is printed today because I'm preaching on that. Or you might use a hymn verse. So as we gather together and let the spirit mold and shape our hearts and minds for worship this day, we do so as the candles are being lit and the prelude is being played.
It is good to give thanks to the Lord. To declare your steadfast love in the morning. The Most High God gathers us to praise His name and declare His love together. We begin as we remember our baptism in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I invite the congregation to please stand for the hymn.
endless grace and every blessing to all who come before you and repent of their sins. Hear us now as we, your humble children, bring our prayers before you. Most merciful Father, we come before you and admit our sinfulness. In our thoughts, words, and actions, we have failed to do what your word demands. We have not honored you fully with our lives, nor have we loved one another as you have first loved us. In the name of our loving Savior, Jesus Christ, we ask you your forgiveness, because our Savior humbled himself for our sake upon the cross. Enable us in true humility to receive the remission you promise to your repentant children. Amen. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. God the Father has taken your sins and laid them upon our humble Savior, Jesus Christ. Because of Christ's sacrifice, God does not count your sins against you. He has taken them away. He remembers them no more. He preserves and delivers you as his child forever. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good proceeds, grant to us, your humble servants, your holy inspiration, that we may set our minds on the things that are right, and by your merciful guiding accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated for the responsive reading of the psalm. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no mercy. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as I had the heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer a prayer to you at the time when you may be found. Surely in the brush of great waters, they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered.
Sunday after Pentecost is from Ezekiel chapter 33. So you, son of man, I have made a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from his way, that wicked person shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, that person shall die in his iniquity, but you will have delivered your soul. The epistle is from Romans chapter 13. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For the same reason, you also pay taxes, for the authorities are ministers of God attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to them, taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, honor to whom honor is owed. Owe no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little children who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fashioned around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world for temptations to sin. For it is necessary that temptations come. But woe to the one by whom the temptation comes. And if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than with two hands or two feet to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the hell of fire. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven, their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. For the Son of Man came to save the lost. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of my Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. 
If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Therefore I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. The congregation may be seated. Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, I would encourage you to turn to page 4 of the bulletin where the text of the psalm is because that, that is the uh, basis of our meditation this day. Uh, but as you can see through all the texts that we hear today and, and, and especially as you hear it in the gospel text, there is a sense of having to deal with the topic of sin. Well, that's pretty much every Sunday. I mean, that's the reality, especially in the Lutheran church as we, as we preach law gospel. It's because we preach the law because we're dealing with sin. And we have the gospel because that deals with our sin. But how often in your life do you turn a blind eye to your shortcomings? Or are you one that sings the great country song? Oh, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. <laughs> Just like your pastor. You laugh. <laughs> Indeed. You know, there are those moments where we turn a blind eye to our shortcomings. Because there's a sense of pride in ourselves. There's a sense of pride in, in those things that we do and that we do well. And we, and we tend to want to focus on those and forget those others. There's also a sense of prejudice. Because then we start making a comparison with somebody else. Well, at least I don't. Or look at what he is doing. And so we establish a sense of precedence where we lose sight of our shortcomings. Sometimes we lose sight of our shortcomings because we want to have peace and comfort in our life. And if we have to dwell and think about those things that we fall short in, uh, we find out that there's not much peace. There's not much comfort. We would rather live our life a little unaware. We, we would like to have those things go unexpressed by ourselves or especially by other people. And somehow if we remain unaware and if they remain, those things remain unexpressed, we believe that our life can be unaffected by those things. But I ask you today, and boy, is our world today, it's no different than it was back in the psalmist's time. It was no different than back in Jesus' time. The, the world has been what the world has been since the fall of Adam and Eve. But especially as we deal with our current context in our world today, in our country today, what do you think has happened to the concept of sin? Has it been forgotten? Has it been ignored? Do people just think that there is no such thing as sin anymore? Well, a little radical of me, but I would say sin talk is uh, politically incorrect. Do you think? But the sad thing is, if you hang around Christians long enough, I think some
sometimes sin talk is religiously incorrect, according to the way some view it. Because when we start dealing with sin, we, we, we have a greater concern for privacy. Usually our own. Don't bring that up to me. Don't bring that up about me. Because we have this concern for our own privacy. We also have a great concern that we, that we shed the proper appearance. That we go out among our fellow congregants, that we go out among our fellow community members, that we put our best foot forward. And so we always want to have this, this appearance of being very pristine. So when it comes to dealing with and talking about sin, we would rather bottle it up. What do people say when you gather together? There are two things you don't talk about. Religion and politics. And so we just end up with this, because again, usually if you talk about religion, you end up talking about sin. We want to just bottle it up. And so you just want to keep it to yourself. Somehow you can be that camel who sticks its head in the sand, and I don't think they really do that. But you stick your head into the sand, and, and if you leave your head in the sand long enough, you, you think it's going to go away. But really the reality of it is, if you leave your he head in the sand long enough, guess what happens? You die. So you'd rather just stay silent. Because you don't want to be disrupted. You don't want to be bothered by it. But then again, you don't want to bring it up about somebody else because you know what that's going to do. And by staying silent, that's a rather unhealthy place to be. Jesus talked about it in the gospel today. Because what happens when we stay silent, what we also tend to do is we rationalize what sin is. They're just being human. It was an honest mistake. Oh, he meant well by what he said. It was just Dave being Dave. And here's my favorite one. Bless her heart. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but when we do that, when we rationalize sin in that way, when we sort of take the impact of what sin really is, it's a failure to acknowledge sin for what it is. And boy, if you go back to Genesis 3, is sin a bad thing? Yes. And not only is it a failure to acknowledge sin for what it is, it's also going to end up being a failure to confess sin. And what you end up doing by, by doing those things is you close yourself off from the act of contrition. Or you might close someone else off who needs to have that act of contrition. <clears throat> because we as, we as Christians, we always like to throw, up, throw out that phrase, well, the scripture says... Judge not lest ye be judged. So I don't, I, I don't want to judge them, so I'm not going to confront them in their sin. And what ends up happening is if we don't confront somebody else in their sin, we don't be, want to be confronted in our sin. And we end up with this imbalance. And what ends up happening is the imbalance is, is bred inside of us. We get this inner imbalance. And if you let that inner imbalance hang around long enough, it takes its toll. 
and the sin infection runs rampant. And as we hear in this psalm today, the sin infection impacts the whole being. As you hear the psalmist, for when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. And when we let sin hang around, it remains un unresolved. An unresolved sin poisons the person and poisons all their relationships. The psalm said when I was silent. Praise be to God, the silence has been broken. Broken silence is the beginning of bringing forgiveness in your life and my life. The breaking of silence comes through the screaming pain of what sin does. The breaking of silence comes with the sheer agony as sin, as you heard the psalmist, the heavy hand of God is pressing upon you. The silence is broken when finally the true depth of sin is realized. But the silence was broken long before it was broken in your and my life through the waters of our baptism. Because there, the silence was broken. There on the cross, our Lord and Savior, when he was nailed and when he was hanging there, screamed out in pain. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It is finished. The sheer agony of the cross that our Christ our Lord and Savior went through for you and for me was when the silence was broken and the true depth of sin was realized but was dealt with. As Jesus had a person-to-person -person confrontation with his Father, And there was an open and honest, yet more importantly, a healing conversation that he had. When he finally said, into your hands, I commit my spirit. So it now affords us that opportunity, as we hear in Matthew 18, to be that instrument that God uses to confront people in their sin. Because we cannot confront them, as Jack and I dealt with in the lessons on Wednesday, we can't front, confront them until we have been confronted. And that's what this psalm is about. This psalm is about our own personal confrontation in that person-to-person -person conversation with God so that he confronts us with our sin, so that he can use us as an instrument, his instrument, so that we can be in those person-to-person -person confrontations with those who have sinned against us. And so by doing that, we can be that instrument that God uses 
for an open and honest, but even more importantly, a healing conversation. The conversation that we had with our God this morning in the confession of our sins. Because as we spoke of our sinfulness, he spoke back to us the words of absolution. And in those words of absolution is an assurance of the forgiveness that you and I have because of what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did for us on the cross and through his resurrection. And it's a release from all those sins. And it's interesting, the psalmist use, uses three different terms for the sins that we have. One is being off the mark, one is being broken and bent, the other one is just being unreliable. Guilty. But because of what Christ has done, you and I are released. And you, we, you and I can be an instrument to release as we speak those words of absolution, of forgiveness, to release from sin, from transgression, from iniquity. And there we can rejoice as the psalmist does in the rest of that psalm. I acknowledge my sin to you and I did not cover up my sin. I will confess my transgressions of the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. And in that moment, we have a secure stronghold that we can find, that little niche within the arms of Jesus. And it's also where we have that close accord with the Father who calls us his dear children. But as we heard in the gospel text today, there's, there's a shouting celebration through the Holy Spirit when that one, when that one is found and brought back into the fold. All of heaven rejoices, and so should his people. I want you to take a look at the bulletin cover. Lou Ann, this one works well. Yeah. I want, to add, I want you to know, if you are that person, if you are that person in the center of the picture, if you're feeling that way right now, if you are feeling that way in your life, whatever your circumstance is, whether there is a sin that, that you have committed and, and, and you just, it, it's just, you're feeling the heavy hand of God upon you, if you are that person that's in the center of that picture, Hear the words today. I, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. That forgiveness is yours, not because I say it, but because he has given it. So let us celebrate with you. Celebrate with us that forgiveness that we have. However, If you are acquainted with a person like that because they're isolated because of their sin and they might be unaware of it or they might, try, they might be trying to hide from it or as we are studying in our book on Friday mornings, Friendship at the Margins, they are, they are in the margins because of their waywardness, because it's Jesus who's in the center. If you know somebody who is like that, get out of that crowd. And go sit next to them. Go sit with them. Confront them. Lead them to a confession. But then pour upon them the amazing grace. How sweet it sounds. It saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. 
My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, his mercy reigns. Unending love. Amazing grace. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. We join together in our profession of faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, which you may find printed on page 5 of the bulletin. I invite the congregation to please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in all Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. For there is a day he rose again from the dead. He descended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From then he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. For all the children of God, the Holy Christian Church, that we proclaim the salvation of Christ wherever we are and to whomever we meet, let us pray to the Lord. Father, we depend on you as you share the good news. For the living out of our vocations, that no matter our station in life and what calling we have been given, that we faithfully represent our Savior with lives of humility and faith, let us pray to the Lord. Father, we depend on you as we serve you with our lives. For all children, that they grow daily in the wisdom of the Lord. And for all parents and those who work to care for children, that they be guided in their important service of love. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, we depend on you as you live as your children. For all public servants who selflessly serve others both those who serve locally and those in positions throughout the world, that they would entrust their lives into the protecting care of their maker. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, we depend on you for your protection. For all who suffer in heart, mind, and body, today we mention specifically Kay Ann, a 10-year-old with lesion on her lungs, for Pam with health concerns, for Connie, who had a complicated back surgery for peace and strength during recovery. For Jean and Judy as they move. For Nancy in stage four pancreatic cancer. For Rick in his recovery from dental surgery. For Laura as her cancer has returned and is now under a new round of chemotherapy. For Ian, who is dealing with COVID-19. For Anita, as she has upcoming surgery. And for all others that we name silently in our minds and in our hearts. That they with patience and faith receive the healing care you offer. Let us pray to the Lord. For these concerns and for every unspoken prayer that is, on, that is on our hearts and minds, that our gracious God would hear and answer us, let us pray to the Lord. Father, we depend on you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The congregation may be seated for the singing of the hymn. Oh, for 